Hi, and welcome back to the show. My name is Mark DeRoost, and today's guest is Andrew Fendi. Now, Andrew Fenby is not your typical rugby player. In fact, he's got quite an unconventional story, and that is the very reason why he's on this show. Imagine what it would be like to go from being an accountant during the day to suddenly playing professional rugby for a premiership team, then suddenly retiring after having a successful career as a very competitive rugby player, only to be called back three months later to come and play for one of the top teams in Europe and help the team get to first position. Well, that's the story of our today's guest. If you like what you hear, make sure to subscribe and share it with a friend. Until then, I give you Andrew Fenby. Andrew, welcome to the show. Good to be here. It's <laughs> taken a while, but I've made it. I know. We, we just thought we'd make you wait just to appreciate it a little bit more. Um, Andrew, I'm really excited about getting you on the show because there's a few things I want to talk about. One of them was you've got a very uh, unlikely journey to becoming a professional rugby player. Um, and actually, rugby wasn't always the only sport you played. You yeah. used to be a squash player and the number one or something, under 19 well, in Wales, yeah, or number yeah. two? I've, yeah, sports and I just want to play everything. And I always have done football, squash and rugby, sort of growing up always what I played. But I never did any representative, any regional, nothing like that with, with rugby. Um, and then it was only when I went to sort of university up to Newcastle, I couldn't play in my first year because I'd broken my scaphoid, so right. operation off contact for a year. So I played squash for university. I got an elite athlete squad where I got a bursary. And I came to second year, I got the all clear to play rugby. Um, and because I couldn't do both for the university, I then went around the local clubs. I found Bladen, who were doing well in the national leagues. So I sort of turned up there, um, said, here I am, want to come play rugby. And they were like, right, what's your rugby CV? <laughs> and I was a bit like, well, I play for Flan did know. And yeah. they're like, who the heck is that? Yeah. <laughs> Who's this idiot here? Stick him in the thirds. So I then went into the thirds and basically just started scoring tries. Um, yeah. Before I knew it, I was in the second, scoring loads of tries. And then eventually I got my break in the first. And you were and still at uni, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. uni. Yeah, yeah. So I was... Um, Newcastle, University of Newcastle. That's right, yeah. And you studied business and finance. That's right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and then that started going really well. And then for three and a half years, basically kept playing there, scoring loads of tries. Yeah. And then my course, as you just mentioned, so it's slightly unusual. It was um, PwC had taken this course from Newcastle University to one side and moulded it. So yeah. as well as doing your uni degree, you're doing your ACA qualification at the same time. So yeah. fast track to becoming a chartered accountant. Yeah. Luckily, Dad found it. I mean, it was one of those. <laughs> yeah, it seems good. I'll go and do it. Yeah. And uh, so you four years, and then finding you're not an idiot and you've passed everything, they take you on. So my fifth year in Newcastle, I was working full time. Um, finished my, did my advanced stage exams, passed those, and it was then, whilst I was still playing for Bladen at the weekends, that uh, I'd been training on and off with the Falcons for a while. They had an injury crisis, they had no one, so they had to put me in, and it was whilst work, working full-time that I got my break with the Falcons, and ultimately... And you were 24, right? Uh, well, 20, uh, 23 at the time. Yeah, 23, so, yeah. Uh, and, that, and that's unusual, right, for like the professional, I mean, I'm not an expert professional well, rugby player, you don't usually start at 20, 20 no, 24? No, 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 yeah. I, was like, I was a real late developer, I was, um, you know, now, especially now, that, and even then, it's just, you know, it's academy driven, so you identify yeah. from a young age with an academy all the way through, and then, even, you know, you just picked up, so at 23, to be given this sort of chance, I was, yeah, it was very unusual, yeah. you don't get, and especially now, it's becoming less and less, you don't really get many people like that, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, whilst working full time, I ended up playing three games. I scored in two of them. We won them. Um, and I mean, my de debut was, that was on it. a Sunday. We won. I came off the bench, scored. I had to sing my song. I had to do my initiation on the coach. I had to <laughs> sing my song on the way back up to Newcastle. Do you remember your song? Uh, yeah, well, I was caught off guard. I didn't know what, what you had to do. So I ended up singing the classic Wonderwall. Okay. Which is a bit of a bad choice because now, I, now, you know, I haven't played for a while. You realize everyone does it. It's a go-to. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, and it was sung very badly as well. I was totally sober. Had a huge night out then that night because it yeah. was just like incredible. And then I was in work. I was in the office for nine o'clock the next morning. So you're accountant by day and then like rugby play yeah, by weekend or yeah. by in the evening. Yeah, so my t at the time, my days were manic. So I would have to, I'd have to get up really early to try and do some work. And then I'd go off to train and train with the Falcons. Yeah. And then from there, I'd go to, so I was auditing. So we'd have to be on client sites. So I'd then have to go straight to the site. <laughs> stay like, late then to make up the hours. Yeah. Uh, so they were really long days. But, but did you have any marks in your face? Did you have any, like bruises? Yeah, or? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'd get black eyes all the People time. thought you were in yeah. Fight Club or something? Well, that's, yeah, you always get that. It's, it's a good, good way of initiating conversation. <laughs> you know? 
No, there's, there's a lot, yeah, that's, it's always been the case. Yeah. You're always getting your black eyes and stuff. So, so tell me this, like, there's a lot of people watching this, they're kind of like thinking, you know, should they have a clear career path or a clear decision about what they want to do next? Did you go into university thinking you were going to become a professional athlete? I mean, was that, was that the kind of the hope? No, I, no, I mean, uh, yeah, I'd never ever in my life thought, I don't think I've really ever said I want to be a professional rugby player. Yeah. I just... I'd love sport. I'd probably a sports, a professional sportsman, yes. What it was going to be, I'm not sure, because obviously squash, as you alluded to, I did, I'd, I'd done particularly well with, and I had sort of people back home pushing me, you know, being like, yeah. I've got potential, you could kick on here, take it to the next level. Um, and as I was younger, football, you know, I'd been in academies, but um, I just always... So you, you played football? Yeah, I used to play a lot. Of, really? Play, yeah, crew academy and stuff when I was younger. So you were yeah. an so like from a young age, you realised that you were quite a good athlete. I mean, there was, there yeah. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just picked stuff up quite easy, and I, I guess, yeah, maybe you know, a, a natural sportsman and competitive, like, yeah, extremely competitive. You yeah. know, I always want to win. And when I was younger, playing squash, you know, I, I would never want to lose a game. I used to run into the walls to, you know, burst into tears, bang my head, so we couldn't finish the game, so I couldn't lose. Yeah. But then doing so, the owner of the squash club had to take me aside and be like, look. You can't be doing this because yeah. no one's going to play you. So I had to learn <laughs> then to be a gracious, you know, a gracious loser. Yeah, uh, and to control it and yeah. harness it. And, and without a doubt, you know, that competitiveness has probably it's got me to where I am. Yeah, you got to, It's being able to harness it because equally it can be pretty destroying. So, so you arrive at the Falcons and you're on your way to become a chartered accountant, or you're yeah. chartered accountant by then. Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, so I was exam qualified. Yeah. The other aspect, you have to do 450 days work experience. Okay. So. I played these few games with the Falcons. They were sort of sniffing about me, going to offer me something, but they were faffing about. A friend of mine who I played with, his friend was an agent. Yeah. He's like, let me put you in contact. He might be able to help you out. Yeah. Put me in contact. He then touted me around, being yeah. like, here's this guy. He's got a great record. Yeah. And with my Welsh links, uh, the Scarlets came up and said, boom, here's a full-time contract. And I thought, <laughs> do I carry on auditing or go play professional rugby? Yeah. And I just thought, it's going to be an amazing adventure. Yeah. Signed a one-year deal. Um, became moved, became four, right? Yeah, moved yeah. down to Clefley and ultimately it paid off. I Boom. mean, I, I think I needed the move. I needed to get away from the bright lights in Newcastle, away from those distractions. Yeah, throw everything into it for a year, and ultimately yeah. it's paid off. Southwest Wales. That's yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, how, you know, have you tried pronouncing it? No, um, no, I haven't. Say that again. Clefley. <laughs> Sinestini. <laughs> uh, my so. my, my yeah. Welsh roots are going to be very upset about that. Um, so you arrive in the club, and did they see you as like the accountant? Did they see like, hey, can you sort out my taxes and you sort out my my accounting, my paperwork? Spot on. It's exactly, exactly <laughs> what they're like. I, I turned up there, and they're like, no, they're quite obviously quite. Who's this, you know, accountant, rugby player yeah. from North Wales? Yeah. Expecting like you know a proper Welshman to. Yeah. Then I turn up speaking like I do, and they're like. God, like, who is this guy? Like, it's just, he's not Welsh. He's, <laughs> sounds English. Uh, and then the first question, everyone comes up being like, right, can you help me save tax? Like, oh, so tax. What are the loopholes? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I'm like, look, I'm, I'm an auditor. Could, you know, you want some in some documents, check him, maybe we can help her. Tax issues, that's not me. Yeah. yeah, amazing. And so you had you had four seasons. By the way, for anybody that's watching this, uh, Andrew may not admit this publicly, but I am your lucky charm. I think I've become, I've become yeah. the official lucky trial of, of Andrew Fenby. Every time I've seen you, you've scored tries. You've got, it's a good try. Uh, yeah, so why don't you come to more games? Invite me to more games. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember it's, seeing you. That was the first time I saw you play. Yeah. Um, the Scarlets. Show, right? yeah. yeah, when you were in the Scarlets. And, and I think you're playing Sharks. Yeah, that's right. And the first, first, thing, the first yeah, try the first you scored was phenomenal. Up. You kicked the ball forward, <laughs> grabbed it, legged it and scored. Um, so you do that four years. And then finally, you get transferred over to London Irish. Yeah. Yeah. What was it like to sort of build that community of players? I'm guessing you played with some some well-known Welsh players. Yeah. Um, and then you had to suddenly leave that and go over yeah, to London. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's hard. You, it's like four years, um, you know, a load of us youngsters all sort of come through together. And a lot of them have gone on to do really well, you know, become superstars. But yeah, I mean, I made some great, great friends there. And then when you leave and you join a new club, it happens all the time. Boys are always doing it. And it's literally like first day of school. You just turn uh, up there and you're like, oh my God, like, <laughs> who's going to talk to me? Like, yeah. just try and find, you know, someone you get on with. Yeah. As you get older and you've been around longer, you normally there tends to be like someone you will know at the club, you know, from being around the while. Sure. Or, or you hope, played with someone or it, yeah, hope, cousin or friend. Or, friend or right. something like that. Yeah. But it, it, it's intimidating. You just got to sort of, you know, it's, it's trying to make new friends again. Yeah. Like from, and, it, and it happens all the time. And what was the biggest difference for you in terms of when you went from like, I want to say amateur rugby, like university rugby, suddenly you signed up to the premiership rugby and I'm guessing there are expectations on your body size, on like 
your delivery on the pitch? What kind of pressure were you put through or at least had to deal with? Yeah, you do, it's, I get everything's monitored, so yeah. you, you notice it now. There's rugby everything, so it, it comes down to. And initially, turning pro, it was more like getting my body up to speed. So mm. even stupid things like my body being being, you know, building up resistance, being able to train. Yeah. You know, for week on, after week after week at a reasonably high level. You know, mm. my, whilst you could probably come and train with us for a day, and you'd be like, "Oh, it's not too bad." You might be a little bit sore. We know it's not too bad, but to do that day after day after day. Before you know it, but in the second week, you all of a sudden you've got an ache in your knee or your hips yeah. aching. You're like, yeah. what is it? Like, <laughs> it just starts because your yeah. body's not used to it. Yeah. Um, so it's get yourself back. And I think no sooner I'd join, I injured exactly through exactly this. I'd, I'd injured a bone in my foot and I was out for two months. There's yeah. nothing worth you join a club, yeah. brand new, and then you're injured. You're yeah. sideline. You can't do anything. Yeah. Um, it's, just, it's just not what you want. So, so walk us through the feeling. What does it feel like when you score a try? And and you're in, you hear the roaring crowd. You you've just scored that try. Maybe it's even a winning try. What does it feel like? Yeah, um, I, <laughs> I might start thinking. Like, I've, I've always just scored loads of tries. So yes, yeah. you know, <laughs> just be like, hey, so do you remember your first just try? Do it all and, the time. Yeah, so, like, it wasn't you know. Was it, like, <laughs> like, like, yeah. Balotelli came yeah. out and said, isn't he? Because he never he wouldn't celebrate scoring. He'd be like, yeah. well, postman doesn't celebrate when he's just post the letter, does he? So, yeah, I get that. Um, so, I mean, Henny's always telling off. Yeah. My wife is always telling me off for not celebrating. Enough. Yeah. Because it makes for a good picture. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just a bit like... Yeah. There's, there's something that I always... Uh, and I hope you don't mind me sharing, but there's something about, like you said, like, you know, when you dive. Like, you know, you see the rugby players who score tries yeah. and they, they run and they dive. But, like, you did that once and you got winded. Yeah, well, I, I, I've got the, like... I've got really knobbly knees. Like, yeah. Everyone sort of notices. And they're like, what is wrong with your knee? Like, why is that thing sticking out? Just <laughs> I've just got really big kneecaps. Yeah. So I don't like the diving because normally I just bang my knees. I <laughs> the skin off them. I've had some, when I was younger, scoring diving try yeah. like, hard pitches, taking all my knees off, and then you have to wear shorts. You know, yeah. stick into your. So I, I yeah, I'm not one for really diving unless. I... So I, I know you can't break secrets. I know it's like you know what happens in locker rooms, all this stuff. But is is the banter that happens amongst the team uh, and rugby in the locker rooms on the tour bus? Is it just as, as, as much as bad as we imagine it, or is it less so in the professional than at university? Oh, no, 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 yeah. E- even more so. It's, it's, <laughs> and whenever anyone retires, the thing they miss most, or a lot of them, you'll chat, what do you miss? So that no one, hardly anyone ever misses the gym and training, yeah. which I actually did when I, I like to stay in shape, but don't miss that. The games, you do miss the games, the big crowds, the occasions, you know, on the day when you're watching it, you're like, oh, you know, I do enjoy it out there yeah. running out with your mates, yeah. but... The number one is the banter, it's the camaraderie, it's the, the team spirit. Because it's you with 40, it's like being at school, you're with, you know, yeah. in sixth form, you're with 40 of your mates just running around on a pitch, playing, training together. It's, it's just brilliant. And it doesn't matter who it is, it might be the, you know, the, the superstar or the academy kids. Someone steps out of line and someone something stupid. Yeah. Out of 40 lads, there's always someone who will pick up and boom, you know, come out with a funny comment and yeah. have the room. Erupting. There's something that's quite special about rugby, I find, compared to a lot of different sports that I've, I've at least sort of looked at from, from outside. Um, what do you think makes that rugby is so good at the camaraderie aspect of building a team? Um, it's a good, good question, that. Like why, yeah, why more so than football? Mm. Um, I, don't know. Well, I don't know. Maybe you've got more... Uh, different shapes and sizes, you know, football is not everyone's sort of similar build, so you're getting, you know, a wider range of people in there, maybe. Yeah, that's true. I don't know, maybe. Is, there, is, there also, is there also something about, like, um, in rugby, maybe it's it's not like individual sport, where you have to have, like, a line form, you have to protect each other, you've got to, you've yeah. got to know that you're going to go to war with your, well, well, you know, that, teammates, yeah. that, that he's, going to take a, he's going to take a hospital pass for you, yeah. Or, yeah. That's it, and, and one thing I noticed from the teams, um, you know, throughout the team, you notice it's, you don't necessarily need to start. It's how well you can play as a team. You know, you can, yeah. you can get a team really bonding. And it's one of the things I'm sort of learning now with Tam Saracens, you know, what, why, what gives them that extra edge. And it's when you see it's like the, the social capital, they put it. So there's yeah. a massive emphasis on, you know, this is your family. You know, you've got to be friends. You've got to get on with everyone. You've got yeah. to spend that time. And when Inve- you're on the pitch, then yeah. that will give you that extra 5%. Yeah. There's so there's there's something I want to touch before before we kind of end, which is around you retire from London Irish. Um, there's this kind of like okay, now there's going to be this change of identity. You go back and work in the city, you work in some investment fund. 
and suddenly you get a text message while you're walking with your dad on the mountain. Yeah, that, that's right. So every, every year I do a walk and we come with my, with my old man, just a bit of a catch up because yeah. he's a North West, I don't see him too much. I'm with some other friends of ours and we're up in the Yorkshire Dales this year. So Sunday we're on top of one of the Dales. Next thing I get a text message, I look at my phone and I was like, wow, guys, you're not going to believe this. I've got a text message asking if I want to go and play for Saracens <laughs> off a friend who's now an, who is an agent. So I was like, uh, responding, be like, well, wow, European champion? Yeah, okay, I'll... 100% up until that. <laughs> never thought anything would come of it. Yeah. And then I was in work on Tuesday and it got to a half six at night. Next thing, phone call. Yeah. I'm looking at that and it's a, an unknown number. Answer it. Joe Shaw, so one of the Saracens coaches, who I know from my time in Newcastle. Yeah. Have a chat with him, explains the situation. I mean, like, considering me, my name's been put forward. I was away all day Wednesday. So I was offline. Thursday, then at lunchtime, I get a phone, another phone call, unknown number. Answer it. Mark McCall, <laughs> Saracens director of rugby. So I was like, this is actually happening. Like, I can't believe it. At this point, I went to my boss and I went and explained to him. I was like, look, I'm not disillusioned with the city. I'm not yeah. desperately trying to get back yeah. into rugby, but I'm just but this... literally gonna, I'm not going to believe what has happened to yeah. me this week. So I tell him, really supportive me, like, you've got to go for it. Yeah. Before I knew it, I had the contract came through Friday, a three month deal, signed that. And they're like, we have a reserve team game on Monday and we want you to play a full 80. And I was like... So, so wait a minute, you've been, you've been off for how long by this point? Six months. Six months yeah. off. So you haven't trained with the squad. Uh, a lot of stag dudes. Did you get a lot of stag dudes, a few beers. <laughs> a lot of A lot of beers. pies. Yeah. <laughs> and so you get this text and like, all right, Andrew, and did they ask you, are you fit enough to come yeah. back and play? Yeah, yeah, naturally it's one of their questions. Yeah. And like I said, I'm... I've got to keep myself in shape. I can't just let myself... You played squash myself. a bit, right? Yeah, when so I, I, when I we caught up at playing yeah. squash again. I've been going to the gym a bit, but nothing to the same level sure. standard as, as sure. I've been a professional sportsman but I was like yeah okay I'm gonna be fine so I played the game I had what well, I panicked I had to phone a friend of mine who used to play rugby I was like what are you doing tomorrow morning can you come and trade we got to go down the park and kick a ball about because yeah. I've not touched one in six months and I got a game on Monday yeah so I, I played the game I got through it lasted the full 80 a few moments when I thought I was going to keel over on the pitch like yeah. I could not breathe <laughs> and then the rest I had to train all that week then yeah. after the game the game was Monday night yeah. trained the whole week and uh, my body was in pieces I was I was in so like a car pain. crash yeah and I was just like, I've just got to get through the week get through the week I'll be alright managed to get through it all didn't miss any training and then on the, the by the second week it was like boom you know uh, switch flicked back in rugby mode and yeah I've been fine ever since yeah yeah, yeah. So how, just walk me quickly, like for the emotional roller coaster, like you get married this year, yeah. you uh, retire from retire. rugby. So you're thinking in your head, this is my last rugby game. Um, you go off and work in the city in a really cool, interesting job. And suddenly you get this call to come back. Yeah. Like what's this, like what are the roller coaster emotions happening? Yeah, all of that. I mean, like, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd had a great six months. I got married, you know, I'd, I had loads of other weddings that I was able to go to. One of the downsides, yeah. you, you know, a lot of sure. times I missed these. So I was able to go to it and then start this great job that I was really enjoying. And I was very happy, you know, I chose to retire. It was on my terms. I was very happy with it. But when Saracens came, any other club, I'm not sure, I, I, would, I wouldn't have done it. It's yeah. like this Saracens European show and they hear so much about their culture, yeah. uh, what they've created there. And that yeah. was what really intrigued me. I was just like, I've got to yeah. do this. So it's what, a brilliant experience. What did you learn? Like, what, what have you taken from this experience of going and playing for some European champions? And like, what is the, maybe what's the championship mindset that you'd say that you've kind of observed or, or soaked up? Yeah, well, I think so... In terms of the actual working environment, you think, what is it? You're going to be like long days, really yeah. detailed. And it's actually not like that at all. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's relaxed. They put the board, you know, like they provide everything for you. So you've, got, you've almost got no excuses, not yeah. to know your information. But the, the, the biggest thing that stuck out on me is, is the laughter, the amount in the work, mm. the workplace. Yeah. There is so much laughter. There's so many jokes in our team meetings. They're so engaging. Um, the presentation, they're like performances that could be in the West End. They're yeah. that funny. There's themes to them. Um, you know, there's lots of banter, lots of jokes. So from that respect, you, you're so engaged, you don't switch off. I've been in meetings before and boys have fallen asleep. Whereas at this, <laughs> it's impo- you wouldn't do it because you're going to miss a joke. Yeah. So yeah. you get like engagement, like engagement. Oh, engagement, yeah. 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 Couple with, you get your, your vital bits of information across. Yeah. So over the course <clears> of the week, throughout the whole team, they'll pick that up. Yeah. Uh, and then that transcends onto the rugby pitch. You know, you have, again, in a war- as part of a warm up, lots of laughter. Um, you know, and that just builds that sort of energy for the training session. Yeah. Um, so that's, and like I said, I alluded back to the, the social capital as well, yeah. you know, real emphasis on, on your family, like looking after, you know, your family off, 
off the pitch and then as players actually being as a family? Yeah. So I, cu I couldn't leave this interview without asking you this question because you know you've got a huge fan club out there, Team Fenby, Fenby for Wales. Uh, what, what, why, why did you end, uh, never ended up playing for Wales? I mean, we all wanted to yeah, see you play for Wales. I, I don't know. I got, during my time down, I got very close. It just, uh, just you know, every time, so it was between me and some other guy and the other guy just got the nudge. Yeah. It's incredibly frustrating, you know, because you know, my career, I like to think, just sort of went from strength to strength. Yeah. Um, but it's just, it's just one, one of those things, things that happen, right? That happens in sport. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't. Another thing I don't think that helped me was when I, so when I was working as a counselor full time, I actually had a phone call off Rob Howley about going on a Welsh tour, and I didn't really understand what Welsh tour it was. Um. So I, he was like, you know, will you be able to get your time for work to go? And I was like, wow, well, I don't know. Actually, I've used all my holiday. I'm not sure. About <laughs> and then when I signed the Scarlets and a lot of boys were missing, I was like, oh, isn't it? They're like, oh, I'm on this Welsh. They're on this Welsh tour in. American, I was like, no. Oh my god, that was a tour that I got a phone call about going, Shit. and I was so nonchalant, and like, yeah, uh, blase. And I'm, I'm sure that definitely didn't yeah. help me, but I, at the same time, yeah, you know, yes, I could have got maybe, maybe I could have gone on it. Was I ready for it? No, I don't think I. Yeah. You know, I needed, like I said, there was a lot of work to be done to get me up to speed. So. I, well, you still have a hardcore fan base out there. <laughs> Hashtag Fenby for Wales. It's still still trending. Still, still, yeah, <laughs> still trending. <laughs> um, last one of the last questions I want to ask you. We've got a couple more. Is the uh, what's next? So so now that you're coming to the end of your yeah. What did you say when we started having when you came in? We uh, we said this is the best succumbent. Is well, that? Well, I have just been on the world's best succumbent. Yeah. It doesn't get it doesn't get you know three months as Saracens played games, won, met some great mates, and yeah, um, yeah you know, having, yeah. having an unbelievable time. So I've, I've got this, and then. Uh, I'll go back to the city to yeah. uh, this investment fund and uh, you know get my weekends back. Yeah, be able to go skiing. That's, yeah. that's you know I can go skiing again. Sure. Yeah. Um, what message would you like to send to anybody watching this who's uh, thinking about having a career as a professional athlete and they're like on their early phase, like maybe in their teens, maybe like early twenties, whatever, and they're thinking they're trying to pierce into the professional scene. What advice would you like to give them, maybe in terms yeah, of? Yeah, I I I'll just say I I'm a big believer that if you're prepared to work hard enough you can achieve virtually anything you mm. want. It's just about dedication and, um, you know, working hard enough to achieve it. And you, you can do it. And like I said with the rugby, and it's quite interesting when I signed at Scott, there was, there was three of us, like these late developers that sort of academy system hadn't picked up, other clubs hadn't really taken an interest in. Yeah. And we all, they've all gone on to have a great career, like Ben Morgan, who's played for England numerous times, mm. number eight at Gloucester, um, Damien Welsh down at Exeter, who's done really well. Um, you know, like the late developer sort of written, yeah. like no one gave a chance. And yeah. It's just if you if you work hard enough, you persist, uh, you show that resilience. You you know you'll get there in the end. Cool, Andrew. What does being unconventional um, what does unconventional mean to you? Well, I guess exactly that is yeah. isn't it? I, I, I was <laughs> came the most unconventional route to professional <laughs> player possible, and it was great. I mean, I I got a degree. I went into it with a very good degree, and I yeah. you know I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't yeah. change it either. You know. So there's, there's a couple of things we have in common. I don't know if you know that. <clears throat> First of all, I believe your middle name is Mark. Uh, it is, yeah, yeah. that's right. So yeah. Uh, best name in the world. Did you research? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you've got a son, call him Mark. You know, that's the only name you can go for. Uh, the other thing is that uh, you're Welsh. Yeah. And as you know, uh, our, my mum has got some Welsh or half Welsh, whatever you call yeah. it. And so I managed to find um, Welsh some Welsh chocolate. Oh, fantastic. This is some uh, some pure uh, Welsh chocolate, apparently. Wow, I know that's that got sheep on it. I know. I know that you're coming to the end of your <laughs> succumbent at Sardis, you know, Sardis, so you can probably get back on the chocolate soon. <laughs> and uh, I know that you also you love food, right? Like you're a great chef. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So I just want to say thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, it's been a real pleasure to sort of get the story behind the story. I always, I always, I've, it's been a while I've been talking about this, trying to get you on the show. It's, it's taken a while, yeah. yeah. It's finally done it. So people who want to connect with Andrew, uh, you can find him over on Twitter, at Andrew Fenby, yeah. Yeah. and uh, on Instagram, if you want to see yeah, like what, what Andrew eats, where Andrew hangs out with, and yeah. what drinks, and yeah. anything else. Um, no, no, that's fine, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, and I could not let you go without asking you, where does the nickname The Goat come from? <laughs> um, so it's when I signed at Irish, we had uh, Glenn Delaney, um, who was our forwards coach there, and he's a bit of a character. And my first game, I scored four tries in pre-season, and he's just like, simple, you just got to feed the goat and he'll score. <laughs> so I think that couple of I had, like I said, mentioned my knee, I've got you know, the obvious knees yeah. in the premiership. Um, coupled with that and then also it just coincidentally my home team in London you know they're the goats as well so yeah. it's just all numerous things all yeah. added together yeah, yeah it's yeah. Just, just sort of stuck really
amazing. Andrew, all the best with your next phase of your career. I know that it's a big identity shift to go from being a professional athlete to being a city, uh, what is it, like investment fund or finance? That's right, yeah. 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 Uh, so wishing you all the very best. May you have the same success in your career in the city that you'd had on the pitch. It was an honor to see you play. And whenever you want to score some tries, you know who to call <laughs> and I'll be back up. Thank you so Brilliant. much. Cheers, really thanks appreciate it. That's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed today's interview as much as I did. I particularly enjoyed the nuggets that Andrew shared about his journey and especially around what actually what it takes to build a championship mindset amongst the team, which I thought that was really valuable. And also the unlikelihood of him in the same year getting married, retiring, working in the city, suddenly being called back. What, what an amazing journey. If you enjoyed today's interview, make sure to subscribe to the show so you don't miss a single episode. If you want to find out more about what guests we've had on the show, go over to marklaroos.com forward slash videos. Also, I'm giving away my book for free. If you want to buy it on Amazon, be my guest. But if you want to get it for free, go over to marklaroos.com and you can download it. Scroll to the bottom, put your name in, download the book, read it. I know it's going to make a difference. It's helped me writing it just to express what I was going through when I was trying to find what I wanted to do, how I went out there, created my video CV, landed my dream job at the Movember Foundation, and I put it all in here. It's all for you, up for grabs for a limited time only on marklaroos.com. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.